Hello and welcome! I'm Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. Up until this point, we learned what variables are, how we can use them in Python, and what they are useful for. We've also learned how to do conditional testing with if statements for more complex logic, along with looping using for and while loops. So now we're going to take a second and we're going to try to go through some practice problems, really hammer in how to use each one of these, and more importantly, how do we use them all together? Because it's really going to be important to get that foundation built when you start to write more complex Python scripts. Because it really comes down to how can we use these all together in order to do whatever you're trying to. So without further ado, let's jump over to Jupyter and we'll work through some examples. With Jupyter up, we are ready to go. As always, the link on the top of the screen is the link to my GitHub page. There you'll find the template that we're using in this video, along with the templates of the previous videos and the solutions. So without further ado, let's go through. Uh, we are going to be looking at variables to begin with, if statements, and then loops, and just working through some practice problems. So we're going to start out fairly simple. All I want you to do is follow these steps right here. So declare a variable x equals 2, 1, and those two ones are characters. So this whole thing will be a string. I then want you to convert that into an integer, add 7 to it, convert it to a floating point, convert it to a string, print it to the screen, and then print the type of variable that x is. So see what you can do there. See what you remember from uh, this is the very first tutorial. Um, but go ahead and take some time and then come back and we'll work through it. All right, so declaring x, we're going to say x is equal to 21. Now, it's very important to put this in quotes because this is not 21 the number. This is 21 the string. Next, we're going to convert that string into an integer using the int uh, and to cast it to an integer. So int of x. We're going to add 7 to it. So x equals x plus 7. Now remember, another way of doing x equals x plus is x plus equals. Next step, convert to a floating point. x equals float of x. Convert to a string. x equals str of x. str is string. Print x and print the type of x. So actually I'm gonna do this all in one line. I'm gonna say print x comma print type x. Hopefully this is all review and you remembered how to do this. Uh, but you can see each one of these steps leads us to the value of 28, which is a string at the very end. Okay, moving on. Let's start looking at some of the math that we can do with these variables. So I want you to Define each one of these variables right here, a, b, c, and d. And then I want you to plug it into this equation and come up with some answer. Uh, so go ahead, take a second, remember uh, what you need to do to get each one of these. Uh, this mod right here means modulo. So remember the modulus function. And uh, again, see what you can do. Uh, come back, compare your answer to mine. All right, let's start working through this. So A is going to be equal to three. B is going to be equal to six. C is going to be equal to one. And D is going to be equal to nine. Now we're gonna come up with some solution. So I'm just gonna call it solution. Solution is going to be equal to, this is the part we're gonna do with the, the numerator, which is A mod B. You remember modulus is the percent sign. So A mod B divided by c times d. Now it's very important to get your parentheses right because you want the entire thing divided by the entire thing for the bottom. All of that is going to be subtracting a to the power of, remember exponents are a double star sign, and I want all of this to be in the exponent. So it's gonna be b plus c minus d. All of that in parentheses. This will give you your solution. So let's print that to the screen. And you can see it's 0.2 repeating. Hopefully you were able to get that. If not, try some other numbers. Uh, see what you're able to come up with. Maybe get a calculator and do it off on the side and then compare it to what you can do uh, using Python. All right, moving past simple variables, let's look at lists. So we have this list. And I want you to print it out in ascending order. So starting with zero, working your way up to nine, 
can you print all of this out to the screen? See what you can do, come back, and we, again, we'll work through it. Okay, assuming you did that, we are going to be printing X, and you remember to grab one value within a list, we're gonna be using indexing, which has a square bracket. So this is just the template that we're gonna use for each step. I'm actually going to copy this, uh, just to have it stored for the next time that we need to use it. Very first value we need to print is zero. So again, lists indexing starts at zero. Very super important point right there. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So X at six will give us zero. Oh, uh, I did not uh, need to define my list here. Make sure you do that. There we go. Uh, make sure you copy this down and use this as your list that you're working on. So printing X at six will give us zero. That's a start. Um, let me copy this line. Okay, so now we're looking for the one, which is index five. Now we're looking for two, which is index zero one. The three is index zero, one, two, three. Again, just start from the left and count uh, starting at zero all the way over to the number that you're looking for. All right, so we just did three, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is four. Two is five. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, another way of doing this one is you could just say negative 1 will give us the very last one. Uh, when we want to go to grab the 7, this is 2 from the end, so you could say negative 2 also. Just different ways of indexing the list starting from either end. All right, that will give us 7. X at 0 will give us 8. Remember, the next starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. Four will give us nine. And that should be the last one. So let me print this to make sure we have it in order. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Cool. Uh, again, hopefully we're able to do that. If not, shuffle the list, see if you're able to do it again. Uh, list indexing is another super important thing that you're gonna need to learn, and you're only gonna learn it through more and more practice. So. Um, see what you can do using other numbers or other values. But for now, we're going to move on to our last one for the variable section, and that is looking at dictionaries. So we have this dictionary here. And before I forget again, let me just copy this down and use it here within the cell. So what I want you to do, same thing we did before, but I want you to do, uh, do it using this dictionary and sort ascending order of the letters. So A, B, C, D through F. Uh, see what you can do, come back and we'll work through it. Okay, if you remember, uh, indexing a dictionary is sort of similar to indexing a list, uh, but we're gonna be using the key instead of the position within the list. So X at whatever the key is. So whatever the key of A is, A is the value, letter three is the key. So X at letter three, if we print this, will give us A. I'm going to copy this down because we're just gonna keep doing this a bunch of times. Letter one is B. Letter five is C. I lost my position, there we go. Letter four is D. Letter six is E. And finally, letter two is F. So there we go, A, B, C, D, E, and F. All right, that's gonna cover the simple variables. Let's move on to if statements. So I want you to create an if statement that prints positive if a number is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, and negative if it's less than zero. So see what you can do. Uh, you can just start by defining some value, let's say X, assign it a number, write the if statement, test it out. If it works, go ahead, change the value of X and see if it works again. Okay, 
Remember, if statements start with if, so if, whatever your condition is. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, we are going to do something. When x is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to print positive. When it's not, so else, this is all other conditions, we're going to print negative. If we run that, 5 is positive. I'm going to print 0 just to show that that one's also. But now if I go to negative 5, that one is negative. So um, that is just a basic if statement. Let's start working into more conditions within that if statement using the elif statements. So create an elif, er, if elif statement that does this logic right here. So um, if x is less than negative 10, set x to negative 10. If x is greater than 10, set x to 10. If x is equal to 0, set x to uh, 100,000. And all others don't change x. So see what you can do there. Again, let's start with some value of x, work through the list, see what happens, see if it uh, acts the way it should. If it does, change the value of x and try again. All right, so if statement starts with if, if the first condition, right? So if x is less than negative 10, x is going to be equal to negative 10. Moving on to the second condition, remember the elif statement is if the if statement fails, it's going to move to the next elif statement. So if x is greater than 10, x is going to be equal to 10. If or elif x equals zero, remember if statements the equal sign is a double equals to compare. So if x equals zero, x equals 100,000. And finally, we're going to end this on an else x equals x. Now you don't need to necessarily have this final else statement, uh, you could just let it go and it continue on with x since none of the other ones were true. Uh, I'm just going to put it in there to show you that you can add an else statement to this. And then uh, finally, I'm just going to print x. Okay, so uh, 63 is greater than 10, so it's going to set it equal to 10, which is going to pass this one right here. If I am down to the value of 6, 6 is not less than negative 10, not greater than 10, and is not 0, so it's going to do nothing. If my value is 0, it is going to pass this third one right here, and it's going to set it to 100,000. If my value is negative 100, it's going to set it to negative 10. It's going to pass the first one, uh, and that should cover all of our use cases right here. So hopefully you were able to get that. Uh, and with that, we'll move on to our final section, which is looping. Okay, so uh, I want you to take this list right here. Again, I'm going to copy it before I forget to do it again. Here is our list, a bunch of numbers. I want you to use a for loop to print out these numbers. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, I will let you pick which way you want to, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you both ways of doing it. All right, so we have this list right here. Uh, the first way of doing it is just going number by number through the list. So I'm going to say for i in range, or sorry, sorry, for i in x, print i. What is this gonna do? Well, it's gonna take the array that we have right here, and it's gonna go one by one and store the value as i. Now you notice, uh, I typically do for x in whatever the array is, but since the array or the list is called x already, I cannot have for x and x because it's going to override what x is and it's no longer going to have the list. So just keep that in mind. But this is going to store each value within the list as i and print it to the screen. And as you can see, it does. I'm going to print a divider because I'm going to show you the other way of doing this. So that is grabbing the values one by one. Now maybe I want to grab the index. So for i 
in range length of x. If you remember, range is going to take a value zero to whatever you pass it in here. If you're passing in the length, it's gonna take uh, the length of the list minus one. And it's basically going to give us the index at each of these values. So if I print x at i, x at whatever the index is we're at right now, which is stored as i. So it goes zero, one, two, three, all the way to the end of the list. Now when I print this, you'll see it's the same list, but we're referencing it by the index, not by the actual value itself. Two use cases of how to use the for loop, both are super important for different tasks. Okay, now I want you to do the same thing. It's the same exact list that we have, but I want you to use a while loop to go through the list. But I want you to do it in reverse order. Uh, so see if you can remember how to do this in reverse order, how to use a while loop uh, in general. And then we'll come back and I will show you how we can actually do this. Okay, so sort of like the second for loop, we need to do this by indexing uh, the list and we need to index the list in reverse order. So that means we need to start with the end of the list. The end of the list will be i is equal to the length of x. But if you remember indexing a list, the very last value is not equal to the length of the list. It's equal to the length of the list minus one since the index starts at zero. So we have our i starting at the end of the list. Now I want to say while i is greater than or equal to zero. So while we haven't hit the beginning of the list, I want you to print x at i. Now, Super important for a while loop is you need to update your index if you're using an index. If you don't, you're going to be stuck in a forever loop and it's going to keep going because your i will never be greater than or equal to zero. So you need to say, in this case, since we're going down, i minus equals one. We're subtracting one every single time we get to the beginning of the list. Printing this, we will see that the list has been printed backwards. All right. Final exercise until we continue on with the rest of the tutorials is now we want to print every single combination of rows and columns in the game Battleship. Uh, so if you think of Battleship, we have a big grid. We have A1, A2, we have J1, J2, all the way up to 10. So we have all of our rows of A through J and we have all the columns one through 10. Can you print every single combination of um, or sorry, can you make a new list of every single combination of row and column? See what you can do there. Remember that lists have a function called append where you can add a new value to the list. Uh, and so again, see what you can do and then we'll come back. Okay, so like I said, rows are A through J. So if I make a new row, it's going to have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. Those are going to be all of our rows. Our columns are going to be 1 through 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now we need to come up with a way of finding every single combination. So this is going to be loops within loops. So if I loop through every row, so four row in rows, this is gonna give me every single row, and then I do an immediate for loop followed by that. So four column in columns, and I print row column. What is this gonna do? Well, it's gonna start with A as the first row. It's gonna to move to the second loop and it's gonna start with one as the first column. And it's gonna print A1. And then it's gonna update the column because that's the innermost for loop. So then it's gonna print A2, A3, all the way to the end of columns. Once it finally hits the end of columns, it's going to update the row to be B. 
Then it's going to work through all of the columns again. It's going to update the row to BC. And it's going to keep doing that for every pair. So if we only print it to the screen, you can see all of these combinations being print. Now, that's okay, but what we really want to do is add all of those combinations into a list. So we're going to make a new list called coordinates. It's going to start out as an empty list. Instead of printing, we're going to delete this one. I'm going to make a new variable called pair, and pair is going to be equal to the row. Now the row is a character, so a string. We're going to add, we're going to do string math here. So we're going to add the column. Now the thing is, the column value is a number. So in order to add it to a string, we need to convert it to a string first. Now that we have the pair, we can say coordinates.append pair. And this is going to add each pair to this coordinates list every single time we go through. And since it's starting at nothing, it's going to only add all the pairs. So if at the very end I print coordinates, you can see we now have this list of all of the coordinate pairs for Battleship. I hope this was a decent overview. Uh, I know there was a lot covered in the last three tutorials and there'd be a lot more uh, in the future. Uh, we'll definitely be using these a lot, so don't worry. We're going to have a lot of time to practice these when we use some of the other things that we're about to cover. Uh, but stay tuned. Functions, classes, inputs and outputs are next, so um, get ready for those, and I will see you in the next videos.